Welcome folks, uh, time for another installment of the Thermoquad Carburetor. Uh, today's episode is going to entail uh, probably everything that I've thought about over the last little while about why pro people are having problems with the center section, the uh, phenolic resin float bowl. Um, there's a lot of talk about people saying that they're warped and uh, they want to get them flat again, things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'll do for starters, uh, maybe before I take that off, um, my theory here is, uh, being plastic, there might be some inherent um, stresses in it when it's cast, or however they make it. Now, there could be a bit of a bend even in a brand new one, is, is my thought. But once you squish it between these two uh, very rigid aluminum castings, I'm pretty sure if it's only a minor bend or warp, if you will, it'll take care of that. The gaskets have a certain amount of give there, they're like a cushion. And when they squish, <clears throat> the uh, the higher spots will compress the gasket a bit more than the parts that uh, are a bit lower, say, or bent downwards. So you've got um, you've got ten machine screws pulling this whole thing together in a sandwich. Okay, so you've got the top casting, you've got the bottom casting being the throttle body, and then the phenolic resin float bowl in between. So you're you're basically squeezing it all together. So over the distance, which is good seven inches or so, the time you, you torque all those uh, machine screws down, it's, it's going to probably take care of any minor warping anyways. Um, reasons for the warping, there's probably a couple, been mentioned uh, various by various people over the years. Um, the notorious ones being in here, I've mentioned on previous videos, there's two hidden screws in here and a lot of people will take these, these eight out of the top that they can see and then they try to pry this thing apart and that damages the float bowl, especially the top section where it meets up with the top casting or air horn. They'll get a screwdriver or something in there and then they'll just start carving away at it and it won't come apart. That's the number one issue right there is if you've got these little guys hiding down in here, you've got to make sure you get them out before you attempt to take it apart. And the only thing, once you've got all ten screws, machine screws out of there, including the two that I just mentioned, the only thing that would really hold it back, um, make sure you got your linkages off of course, is uh, the gaskets themselves, if you put them on dry, they will bond to the, um, the materials where they're being squished. Uh, what I do when I assemble these things, and I'll show you in future videos, is I use um, some never seize compound or anti seize compound. Uh, you could even use uh, grease. Probably better not to use petroleum base, it might upset the gaskets a bit with uh, not liking that stuff. But if you get a synthetic grease, say like, uh, oh, what's the stuff they use for ignition modules now? It's uh, silicone based grease I believe. Uh, dielectric grease I think they called it. I use, I've used some of that on both sides of the gaskets before I install them because I like to tune my carburetors. They're never 100% when you first rebuild them, at least as far as I've, I've experienced. And um, I like to get in there and you know change jets, rods, whatever. You have to open them up. In that case if the gaskets are already lubricated so much easier to uh, get this thing apart. It just falls apart in your hands rather than scrape gaskets and especially if you have a gasket that's stuck to the um, the top of the phenolic uh, float bowl here. You start scraping with a sharp object, razor blade or whatever, you're going to start carving material off of this, uh, this float bowl here and you don't want that. So let's get this thing apart <clears throat> and I've come up with a couple other things too. Uh, heat could be one. Excessive heat in the engine compartment. If you have headers on your car you probably know that it gets really hot in your engine engine bay. Um, with stock cast iron manifolds it seems to be much cooler inside your engine compartment. So um, I actually just thought of this uh, earlier today is uh, there's some uh, detective work that uh, both you and I could be doing here and it uh, it involves the gaskets when you take it apart. Okay so I'll just show you on the top the float bowl where it um, where it's, this is upside down, this was the part that was on top of the float bowl, you can actually see a pattern. There's my handy pointer. You can actually see a pattern on the gasket itself. And if you follow that pattern around the whole thing, wherever there's a, a point of contact where the, the float bowl or any other part, whatever part you're dealing with, you'll see a, a pattern in the gasket. So just follow that pattern all the way around and make sure that there's no missing spots. It's, for instance, say you had a someone who's had a carburetor previously you bought used, say, just for an example. 
and they pried it apart with a screwdriver there'd be a piece missing well you could actually see that in the gasket if that's that that gasket was put on after the damage was done like on a rebuild say you'll see a part on the gasket that won't have a compression mark on it so that's your telltale right there and that applies to well in the case of a thermoquad four two gaskets and each gasket has uh, two sides so there's there's four detectives that work for you so I just take this one off here and show you so this one's a, you know it's an old used one it's just uh, an example one it's a little hard to get off that side I'll just put that aside for now and I'll flip it over and the the part that um, you can actually see uh, before I get too far along you can actually look at both sides and you will will see that um, there are lines on one side that actually dig right into the gasket material um, if you look at the casting you actually see it doesn't go all the way around uh, it kind of stops in some of where the um, this machine screws come through their holes but on the casting on this particular one on the top this is the top half mind you you can actually follow the part where it squishes down on top of the float bowl and they've, they've put this little um, sharp line in the casting to help seal the uh, the gasket so you can you can look at all these little fine points when you get yours apart look for any damage any nicks um, if there's anything that say someone pried a, a, car, a carburetor apart and you happen to have this misfortune of, of purchasing that used carburetor then you got to look for these little things so that's the top half there for the air horn and the top of the uh, float bowl put that aside okay onto the float bowl now I'll just move this out of the way so it doesn't uh, interfere with what I'm trying to explain here. Well, you just basically, well, we can do the bottom gasket too. Um, same thing there, you look for the pattern it's on there. I flip this over now, and they've done the same thing on the bottom of the float bowl. You can see all these little lines on here. Let's see if I can get the lighting just right. You can probably see it now. If I get the lighting just reflecting right, you can see a pattern on the bottom of the float bowl there. And that actually digs right into the gasket, and you can see a see its mirror image in the gasket. Okay, if I can get, I don't know if I can light that. It's kind of dull. There, you can see the pattern that's in the gasket. Just follow that pattern everywhere that it makes contact with any of the surfaces that are being compressed together by the machine screws. And if you see something that looks a little suspicious, invest, investigate a little closer. Uh, that's it for the gasket part of it, and the telltale are little detectives helping us out there. You also look at the, um, the actual uh, the float bowl, make sure that there's no damage. You're looking uh, for any cracks, any excessive warpage. Um, look down in there where the, um, let's see if I can get the light on it. Right down there you see a little copper fitting that's molded into the float bowl. That's, that's where the, it's the, uh, the primary main jets screw in. Um, you have to make sure that that's still sort of casted in place. You don't want to see any chipping or breakage in there. You, you want to have a good seal. There's one on each side, two primary main jets there. There's the other one on that side if I can get the lighting just to reflect for me. So basically you're looking for any damage, any grooves or anything where someone's pride, or if uh, the carburetor caught fire. There's another example that might warp it or you melt this stuff. It's a uh, it's a phenolic resin. Um, I'm not sure it's probably halfway between plastic and the old telephone material called Bakelite or something like that. But if you look it all over, just look for any cracks. You don't really want to be installing one of these if there's a crack down the main body or anything. You could try to repair it. I don't recommend it though. You don't want a fuel leak on top of a hot engine and dripping down into, you know, especially you got something like headers, then you're probably asking for a, a, a car fire. Um, Another thing to watch out for, well, if you do have a minor warpage on here and you, you find that the float bowl that you have has no major damage or cracks in it and you really want to get this thing flat, you'd have what you'd have to do is get a full sheet of sandpaper. I would say uh, I would only do the one side. I probably wouldn't touch the side that has uh, all these uh, molded little protrusions in there that make it form and dig into the gasket. I would probably leave this side alone. If it's that warped, you're probably better off to get a replacement uh, float bowl anyway. But on the top half, you can get away with a little bit. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, me and my throat problem again. Also down in here, 
just uh, adjacent and inside where the um, the top casting goes in and squishes those uh, fancy little O-rings with the grooves in them. Uh, you have to look down in there. I don't know if I can get the light to, to shine for me. But right down in here, this little U-shaped place here, you got to look down in there and make sure that that surface there is not crack chipped or damaged any way. You have to have it so it's nice and uh, flat. You can, you can get away with a bit of minor stuff, but as long as it's not going through the whole face of it, you have to have a pretty decent um, um, surface for those O-rings to compress and make the seal. As you can see, this is down in there. Uh, the fuel level is probably oh, down from the top of the float bowl, say, um, an arbitrary measurement, say a quarter inch, just, just, just for discussion's sake. Uh, this lower area is way down in there, so if it doesn't seal properly, that extra fuel is going to bubble up, uh, come around into this little fitting here, and back up again, and it's going to leak down into your uh, into your intake manifold. I've had it where um, I've had leaks with the original uh, gasket material. It was a leathery type or gasket type. It wasn't the newer O-ring rubber type that do really good. Uh, these old ones they dry up, and then any time that the f uh, float bowl is full of fuel. Uh, it will leak past there, go down into the primary throttle bores and down, and I've had it so bad that it actually started getting into the crankcase. It was, I was getting gas smell off the dipstick when I checked my oil, so there's obviously gas getting all the way down into the uh, oil pan. So these are the, the most important things of a, a thermoquad rebuild for keeping them from leaking is these two little areas in here where those, uh, those two little seals go. Um, let's see, there's another Another thing I should address, you can see here there's these extensions here, they're, uh, they're for a fuel channel so that the fuel can get from the main jet and then wrap back up and get up into that, uh, you can actually see where they connect here. So the fuel will be going down into the primary main jet, it goes down in through this little fitting here and back up again and up through here where the top casting can pick it up and do the primary uh, part of the carburetor for you for fuel supply. Um, with these, I've never had to deal with them. These look like originals. They um, they have look like a white kind of a, an adhesive of some kind. It's it's fairly hard. Um, the best recommendation I can give you to if these things are leaking or they fall off or whatever, but if they're still good in, in good condition, you can reuse them. And the float bowl, if it's in good condition, naturally you have to make sure that nothing's cracked. Uh, what you'd have to do to to put them back on would to to make sure you you clean this thing. And get something like uh, well you could sand them a little bit but the part where you're putting the bonding agent between this little cap and the bottom of the float bowl it has to um, it has to be bone dry if you have any um, oily residue or, or even gasoline residue uh, the, the bonding agent you use in there will not stick for very long it has to be bone dry so I suggest something like a oh, the brakes uh, the brake cleaner the spray can thing you can put a bit of that on there it's supposed to have uh, no residue when it dries or if you use safety glasses and gloves and make sure no one else is around and do it outside is get some acetone from your hardware store or paint store and uh, just give it a, a little wipe with a disposable rag nice clean rag and let it dry it's got to be totally dry and then you can also sand it with some fine grit sandpaper 100 uh, grit or finer a higher number is a finer grit uh, make sure it's bone dry and then the the best suggestion I've uh, I've heard of on the internet is to use a, a two-part uh, epoxy epoxy glue, the clear clear one, not colored or anything. People have tried to use JB Weld. It's kind of a gray uh, two-part epoxy, but uh, one of the the best sources I've heard of is uh, recommends that you use uh, two-part clear epoxy when you put this together, and that should give you uh, the best run for your money. Um, like I said, I've never had issues with uh, carb fires or uh, these things leaking or coming off. Uh, I've had good luck with these so far, but you're probably going to run into one where someone's pried on it. Like those two screws that I was mentioning on the top air horn, they, they try to pry it apart because they don't know about those two screws. Or if uh, you have a bad running carb, it backfire multiple times. Um, you know, they, they keep driving the thing and it's going boom boom, they try to get the heavy foot, make the secondaries work, but it's just backfiring and you're getting flame shooting back through the throttle boards, that's not a good thing. 
And actually I can show you that, that this must have had a carb fire or something. This is a $25 carb I bought just for spare parts. And you can see on the, um, the primary throttle plates are butterflies. It's all blue in here, so there was some kind of a fire going on. Although the secondaries, they, they look pretty clean. But uh, this one's obviously had some bad moments in its lifetime when it was operational before I got a hold of it. So basically, um, if it's a minor warp, I wouldn't bother with it because once you put those 10 machine screws and reassemble the carburetor you've got these gaskets here and uh, when they're new they're fairly thick and fairly supple they do, do have a good uh, squishing um, ability and they will take up the slack of any minor warpage that you have as well as uh, when you uh, tighten those uh, 10 machine screws down equally then uh, it should take care of your problem um, it might cost you some extra gaskets, but if you really wanted to, you could put some new gaskets in there without a total rebuild and tighten down those 10 machine screws and then undo it. Like I say, you should put a little bit of, um, if you don't want them sticking, put a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, silicone grease or anything that's not petroleum based. You could get away with a light coating of oil, you know, motor oil if you really wanted to, and then just wipe it dry. There's enough residual there that it... Uh, it'll keep your gasket from sticking. Now, like I say, you could do it without doing the total rebuild. Just put the three sections together like I have here and uh, take it apart again after you've tightened it all up and then check the pattern on those gaskets. Um, they say not to reuse gaskets, but I've, I've done jet changes and had to take the top half off and do float changes. And I've used gaskets over and over again and I've never had a problem with vacuum leaks or anything. Um, like I said, there's the experts out there will say, oh geez, you got to have a new gasket for every time you turn a screw. Well, I guess if he's uh, looking to make a lot of money on rebuild kits, that would be the way to go. But me, personally, not a problem. Like I say, that's what I do. I never put these things in dry. I've rebuilt uh, all kinds of different carburetors, domestic kinds mostly. But I've always done that for years, is, is to coat them in a pinch. If I don't have anything, I'll just get some motor oil and rub it on there and then don't have any excess on there and then when you um, when you put them together they do their thing and then when you want to get them apart then you don't have you know gaskets sticking and ripping apart you can actually reuse them but like I say there's some guys that say "Ooh, vacuum leak I'm not worried about it never have been so it's your call it's your money <laughs> do what you like okay so there's these are little um, detectives that are out to work for you so you'll check the pattern on those things and uh, you will see that they are, for the most part, if you have a, one in decent shape, it'll show a nice even um, uh, depression. It'll give you a nice little uh, pattern in there as to when it gets squished between the parts. So that's what I've come up with today. I think I've addressed everything with the, the float bowl. So like I say, the biggest thing is to make sure that it's uh, not cracked and that all these uh, places I had mentioned uh, aren't having any issues with uh, breakage, leakage, or anything like that. Okay, on the top top here, a lot of people will say, well, that looks awfully rough. This particular one, it looked like it had been put in a milling machine and just given it a, a cut with a big headed cutter. It's not even finished uh, that smooth. You can, I don't know if the video will show up, but there's a bunch of lines. And this looks like about, oh, might be a 10 inch cutter or so that went through this and took a the cutting off the whole thing to make it flat. So I would just basically look for damage. Um, you can, I was thinking about it earlier, just get a straight edge and put it all over, especially on this top half, uh, where it, the top part of the float bowl where it's all like got the cavities and things and you can take a, a good metal straight edge and then turn it, go kitty corner, go every which way and then if you look at it properly, you can use light behind it or a flashlight, and you can um, you can actually shine a light from say down away from this video and shine it up towards that, and you can actually slide this along on, on different angles, and you can see the, how the light comes up on it. It's uh, a halfway measure to do it with a straight edge, but if you could find something like a big plate of glass, half inch thick glass or something, or something that you know is totally flat, you could just sit it on there. But like I say, if it's only a, a minor warp with no uh, chunks missing or anything, then you can be sure that uh, the gaskets and the 10 machine screws will, will squeeze it back straight. 
Um, I'm pretty sure with all these holes and everything, uh, those uh, the throttle body and the top air horn casting have got a lot more rigidity than this thing does. So once that's all squished back together, the gasket should take care of any of the uh, minor imperfections or slight bending you have. Okay, so if there's anything that I've left out, you can leave it in the comments down below this video. And um, I might just add to this later, I'll see how this one goes um, as, as far as addressing uh, float bowl problems. So like I say, just be careful. You don't want any leaks um, from a crack or anything like that. I don't recommend repairing a crack. I would, I would try to find one of these. There's probably a place you could find uh, one. And while I think about it, there are several different kinds uh, of uh, float bowls. you got to watch. Um, there's two basic sizes. Uh, the, the secondaries are usually the same uh, size, two and a quarter inch. On the primaries, you've got uh, two different basic ones that I've encountered. It's got the one, for the one and three eighths uh, throttle body bore and the uh, inch and a half. So you have to watch which one you get. Also, there'll be you can see here. There's a little bit of a, a boss cast into this uh, front of this float bowl. It'll be on the front left hand side usually, and it's usually uh, if it has. Uh, I think it's for Venturi uh, vacuum signal, maybe to go to a, an amplifier or something like that. I've never used or had one to work on, but uh, sometimes you'll find them with a brass tube there. Uh, more specifics, uh, whether or not you could plug that off. Like you can see in here, there's another part of the... I don't know if I can get the lighting right, but... Right down in here, there's there's a, ch a channel where it comes through where they would probably drill and then insert that brass tube. But this one is as simple as they get. There's no extra parts or pieces on it. So there's different ones. Don't forget, there's many different models of these things. And you really got to try to get the right part number if you can or get the right part interchange and uh, maybe find out from various sources whether, whether or not... Uh, uh, float bowl that you get is not exactly 100% the same as you got whether it's compatible and will work well with your um, carburetor model number. So there you have it for today folks. My head scratching and passing it on to you. That all said and done, take care, have yourself a nice day and uh, bye for now.